السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم my name is Victoria Naila Edwards um, maybe you've seen my previous video a young convert Victoria of Islam uh, since this video and since I converted I'm always asked the same question which is what made you convert I thought I would save myself some time repeating my story over and over again and tell you myself and tell everybody in YouTube <laughs> my story of how I converted before I tell the story of how I converted um, you should know some history about me um, I was atheist before, I didn't believe there was a god or an afterlife or another life or anything. Uh, so this led me to study a lot of religions because I was so interested why most of the world believes that there's a god and like what makes them believe. I wasn't so much like searching for the truth or whatever, I was just kind of curious and because I didn't have any beliefs it was easy for me to like listen and read about other people. So, in this time I was really into Buddhism, not so much the reincarnation, another life kind of thing, but more the moral values of Buddhism, like peace and not hurting anyone, and the fact that nothing's in our control, I liked these ideas. Which in time I've come to realize are very close to Islamic beliefs, so I have some theories on that, but that's not what this video is about. Um, so anyway, in uh, January 2011, I moved into a new house in Malaysia. My best friend was there from Canada, and I've invited a few friends over so that we could have barbecue housewarming party. Uh, during the barbecue, we had the doors open for the house in uh, Malaysian houses. If you've ever been there, you'll know there's the glass sliding door and then the wood normal door, and they're usually like next to each other in front of the house. So I took my friends upstairs to give them like a tour of the house and um, as I was coming out of the second bedroom I heard like a loud bang and my dog like yelped. Like, ah! You don't know what a yelp is. Um, but I ignored it because she's crazy and probably she knocked something over like she always does. So I just continued and when I went downstairs my best friend was like, looking so terrified, so scared and just staring at the glass door. So I got her attention and I asked her what happened. She told me that my dog was walking towards the glass door and the glass door like slammed shut by itself. And if any of us know anything about uh, science, <laughs> then you'll know that like even if the wind was so strong that it closed it, then the wood door should have closed too, but it didn't. So we all got really scared and we went outside and we didn't come back in for a while. <laughs> um, Shortly after, my friend, she left, and over the next few months, like, small things can happen inside the house, but you can make excuses for it. Like, I come home and something wasn't where I left it, or I hear something dropping in the room and there's no one there but me, like this. Then in uh, May that year, I came home one night, it was like 2 a.m. I went to my room, and... I got ready for bed, everything. Then I realized I left my light on outside my door. So I went outside to turn it off. And when I went outside, I felt this feeling that I felt before when I would say I was around ghosts, and maybe that sounds crazy. But yeah, like something is not right, like a gripping feeling inside your chest. And I heard like really quietly like some white noise or strange noise or something. And that moment, I swear, like, I could feel that it's looking at me from across the hall. My heart like dropped out of my chest. I just I got so scared and I was home alone. So I just shut off the light and I locked my bedroom door. And when I turned around, something hit the door so hard behind me. The whole door shook. And in this moment I was so scared. And I'm never like really turning to God in any situations because I didn't believe in it and I didn't like see a point, you know, even if I'm gonna die or something, like I didn't see a point to like ask something that I didn't believe in. But in this moment, like when I was helpless and I was hopeless and I couldn't see what was there and I couldn't protect myself from what is there, my mind was like completely clear and the only thing in my mind was Allah. 
not God, not Buddha, not I don't know <laughs> all these other gods that I've studied. It was just Allah, and some people might argue that that's because I was in a Muslim country and most of my friends are Muslim. But like so many years, I've been there and ne never like did I think about Allah or something like this in a situation. So. In that moment, like the only thing I could think of to do was to ask Allah to help me. So I said, like Allah, if you exist, like please protect me in this situation. And I think most of you will agree in this kind of situation, you're not going to sleep, right? <laughs> you're so scared, right? Um, so I just laid down in bed and I put something on my laptop to watch. And usually it takes me around 10, 15 minutes to sleep, but in five minutes, I think I was like out cold. So in the morning when I woke up, I'm a pretty logical person, so I had to like start thinking about what happened the night before. So I said like, Allah, if that was you, like thank you for protecting me. And if this is the path that you want me to go on, you have to help me and guide me because you know, 22 years of my life I didn't find any religion and I didn't, nobody on this earth could convince me like so many people tried to make me Muslim or ask me to be Muslim but like nobody could do it I was so stubborn so like I really needed Allah's guidance in this so over the next few weeks I started to feel really curious about it and I started to ask people um, like what does Allah teach and they would tell me things like Allah teaches patience so in like traffic jam or some situation where I feel impatient and you start to feel that fire burning inside you. Uh, I would remember Allah and I would make myself patient and calm and then like the situation would change and I kept doing this with like different aspects of Islam. So after that like few months it was August which was uh, Ramadan so I decided to take Ramadan to really like learn what it's to be Muslim and to like hopefully make a decision um, if I can really do it because I didn't want to be a 50-50 Muslim which is what I call it when like you don't eat pork but you go drinking every weekend like it doesn't make sense to me if you want to commit to something to do it only 50% we should try our best at least try you know to be 100% Muslim if we can so I from the first day of Ramadan I started fasting I printed off <laughs> something from the internet to learn how to pray in English so that I could understand it and um, I read a chapter of Quran every day because I, I knew it was quite important to like understand uh, the book and what exactly it's teaching to know whether I can agree with it or not um, so it was pretty hard the first Ramadan it was really weird and like going into the in Malaysia we call it surah it's like the small masjid inside um, a building like it's not a mosque um, going in there the first time, not knowing if I have to do wudu before or after, <laughs> it was quite interesting. Um, but about halfway through Ramadan, I decided that I didn't want to live or not live the next day, not being Muslim. So after Isha prayer, I um, sat in my living room and I said Shahada in English, <laughs> which maybe some people will say is wrong, but I didn't know any different at that time. And yeah, from that moment, I was Muslim. So I hope this story inspires you or uh, at least entertains you <laughs> and inshallah you're gonna see more videos from me. I know I've been thinking about it for a long time and I just I don't know what's holding me back probably shaitan and being busy and being a bit scared maybe I don't know. So, inshallah, 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 soon you're going to see more videos about my views on Islam and the, I wouldn't say problems, but flaws with our ummah today. So, always remember Allah and our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what he would do in the situations you face every day in your life. Allah be with all of you. Assalamu alaikum.